Hello beautiful besties, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new and welcome to my 24 hour readathon reading vlog. I am so so excited for today's video. I have decided these are my absolute favorite videos to make. I love a 24 hour readathon, I love challenging myself, I love hanging out with my friends on sprints and I'm just so so excited to take you guys along for this journey as I attempt to read as many books as I possibly can in a 24 hour period before I pass out. So today is Thursday. I am recording this quite early. She is on top of her stuff, but the readathon will officially start on Saturday morning. I don't know what time I'm going to start. I think probably around like eight or nine, I will officially start my readathon. A lot of my friends that are doing this with me live in the central time zone or Eastern time zone. So they will already probably be done with the book by the time I wake up but but hopefully i will be able to catch up to them pretty quickly we are also doing like our slumber party reading sprints so cami is hosting sprints in the morning and then yours truly will be hosting sprints in the evening but i'm excited because we are going to be doing our face masks on the live as we did last time which was so much fun kara's face fell off it was wonderful so Let's get into my TBR for this weekend. The last 24 hour readathon that I did in the month of February, I messed up. I played myself because I did not have a plan. I didn't have a TBR going in. I was like, I'm just gonna mood read through my day and see what happens. Yeah, that was bad for me. I am somebody personally who needs structure and routine and a plan. I thrive in that setting. When I just let myself go loosey goosey for a day, it doesn't always work out. And while I did read three books, I will say I read three books. That is very good for a 24 hour readathon. I just didn't feel super accomplished and it was a struggle to finish the last one. And I wanna go in with a little bit more of a strategy this time and hopefully be able to not only get through four books, that is my goal, but also hopefully find some new favorites. Even though I am picking books that are gonna be a little bit easier to get through, I still want to really, really enjoy the books as I read them. So let me talk about my plans thus far for Saturday. So the first book that I will hopefully be reading during my 24 hour readathon is going to be The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is a YA thriller. I read the first book, The Inheritance Games, a few months ago. Look, it's not amazing, but it's very fun, and you just fly through this book when you read it. There is a mystery aspect, and honestly, calling it a YA thriller probably isn't accurate. It's more like a YA mystery, but the mystery aspect of this book is intriguing enough. This series is basically like Knives Out, where our main character is just like a regular girl, and then she finds out that this billionaire in Texas left her most of his fortune, and his whole family is trying to figure out why, so they bring her kind of to the estate, and they have to go on a bit of like a mystery treasure hunt to figure out the secrets that this guy held and what the connection to our main character is. As I said, not an amazing book. The main character did make me roll my eyes a couple times, but it's fun. It's a good time. And there is still like a lot that we don't know that wasn't answered in the first book that I, for one, am curious about. So I'm going to finish out this trilogy. This is the second book. I think that this is going to be a really fun book to read during the readathon. I think I'm going to start my day with this and I, I don't know. I hope that I enjoy this one. The next book on my TBR for Saturday is going to be Sweet Hand by N.G. Peltier. This is your classic enemies to lovers rom-com featuring a wedding. Our two main characters do not like each other. They've known each other for a while and have never gotten along, but their friends are getting married. He is the best man. She is the maid of honor. So obviously they are going to be thrown into a lot of situations where they have to be around each other. And I've just heard that this book is fun and funny. I've heard that the spice is really good and I'm just excited to read this book. I also just think that the cover is one of the most just like happy and beautiful covers I've ever seen. They're baking. There's a cat. It just gives me warm warm summery vibes. So I'm really, really excited for this one. And then the third book that I have on my TBR is going to be an urban paranormal romance. This is a series that I've always had curiosity about, heard mixed things about, but I am very intrigued by it. And that is Magic Bites by Alona Andrews. This is the first book in the Kate Daniel series. This is a paranormal shifter romance series. It was written in the mid 2000s. What I've heard about the series and kind of how it's been talked about is similarly to what I've heard about the Guild Hunter series by Nalini Singh, where like, it's just fun. It's a good time. It might not have a ton of like incredible world building or fantastical elements, but the romance is good. It might be a little bit cheesy, but it's like a good time. And sometimes we need that in our lives. So I'm going into it with that mindset, but I do think that I have the potential to really, really enjoy this. So our main character, she is Kate Daniels, as you can see on this very mid 2000s cover. She's a mercenary, she lives in Atlanta, and we just gotta follow her while she deals with the things that happen when you are a mercenary in a shifter world. I don't know if she's a lion or maybe she falls in love with the lion shifter or maybe the bad guys are lions. Who can say? But I for one am very excited to read this and I hope that this will be a book that I just really fall in love with and I can read all the rest of the books in the series and it'll just be a series that I go to when I just want something quick and fun and just to get a little bit of a paranormal romance fix. So I have high hopes for this one. I think it's going to be really fun. Okay so those are the first three books that are on my TBR for Saturday. I'm really excited for all three of them but I need to add a fourth book into the mix and specifically I need to add a shorter book you guys to that 
that group. None of those books are like crazy long. I don't think any of them are over 400 pages, but I want to go into this 24 hour readathon with a strategy and try to help myself out here. So I need like a graphic novel or a novella or something like that. So what I am going to do right now, and I'm going to take you guys along for it, is I'm going to go to the Promised Land, aka Barnes and Noble, and try to find something that's on my Goodreads TBR that is a little bit shorter and a book that I'm interested in and excited about, but something that will hopefully be just a little bit uh, shorter and less challenging to get through on Saturday. I'm actually going to walk there because it is 55 degrees and sunny, which in Washington, that basically means it's like 70 degrees. So I'm going to take advantage of this weather and I'm going to walk to Barnes. I haven't done that in quite a while, but I think it'll be fun. I'm going to listen to my audiobook that I'm reading right now. And um, yeah, I'll take you guys along and we will see what I end up picking up. So that is it. That's the intro for this 24 hour readathon. I'm going to go to Barnes right now. I'll take you guys along for that. You'll see what I end up picking. And then I will talk to you guys on Saturday when the readathon has officially started. <music> Hello, Angel Besties. Happy Saturday. Welcome to the start of the 24 hour readathon. So, I started my first book for this readathon at 8 a.m. So, that is going to be my start time for this 24 hour readathon, and it's going very well so far. I got up, went and got a coffee, and I've just been doing my hair and makeup and listening to my first book on audio. So, the first book that I will be reading for this readathon is The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, and it's fun. It's a good time. It's definitely not groundbreaking. Definitely not going to change my life, but I find the mystery to be intriguing enough. There's lots of twists and turns, and although some of the dialogue is a bit cringe, I'm still engaged enough in the plot that I don't really mind as much. I don't know, but I'm having a good time and I'm curious to see where this book goes. So I'm going to be focusing on this book for the first part of the day, and I am, let me see, I'm on page 124, so I'm about a third of the way into it, and these chapters are just so short and this book reads very quickly, so I definitely think I'll be able to get this done pretty soon. And as you guys saw, I went to Barnes and Noble and I ended up picking up one book for this readathon and then I ended up getting a little bit distracted by the other things there. Who can blame me? I'm sorry. But I ended up picking up Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna McGuire for today's readathon. So it's definitely a popular fantasy series here on booktube. Hannah absolutely loves it. It's one of her all-time favorite series. And so I was like, you know what? Why don't I check that out? Why don't I give it a shot? I've never read a book by Shauna McGuire and I just hear a lot of people talk about that series and say that they really, really enjoy it and it's very magical and it's pretty short. So hopefully I like that. I'm also going to be reading Magic Bites by Alona Andrews, as I said, and then I have Sweet Hand by M.G. Peltier, and then I also grabbed The Heart of Betrayal, which is the second book in the Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson. I grabbed that just because I don't know if I'm in the mood for a contemporary romance today. I'm kind of just more in like a fantasy mood, I say as I'm reading a YA mystery, but after I'm done reading this, I don't know. 
I'm kind of just in a fantasy mood lately, like sidebar, but I've already started planning my April TBR and I think I'm only reading fantasy and fantasy romance other than Emily Henry's new release, but I don't know. I'm just in a fantasy era right now and I, I mean, I'm always in a fantasy era, but but I'm really, really just like interested in reading fantasies right now. So I might pick up that Remnant Chronicles book if I feel so inclined. I'm rambling at this point. Okay, so it is, let me see, it is 9.53. And so that means I'm about two hours into the readathon. Great start to the day, very excited. This book was definitely a really good one to start with so far because it's fun, it's interesting, and it's a little bit cheesy, but in a way that I enjoy. So I am happy that I started with this one. Cami is hosting sprints right now, so I'm gonna hop onto those. Hopefully they're gonna be on for a while. I will talk to you guys in a little bit with another reading update. gorgeous besties. I have very exciting news. I finished my first book of this 24-hour readathon. That is, of course, The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I don't really know how I feel about this one. I like the first book better. I think that things got a little bit too convoluted for me in this one in regards to the plot. The entire plot of this trilogy is a little bit convoluted, but this one, I feel like we were just really shooting for the stars here. I don't know if I was on board, but like I had fun. I don't know. Like, this book is what it is, and I knew that going into it. I enjoyed myself, I was rolling my eyes a few times, I don't know, very much all over the map here. It's interesting. I want to give this book like a 2.5, but that does feel very harsh, but like, is this a three star? I don't know, I don't think so. So I might give this book like a 2.5, but like, still enjoyable in like a reality TV type of way, I guess you could say. Like definitely has some moments where I'm just like, what are we doing? But I'm still intrigued enough. I am gonna finish this trilogy. I've decided, even though I didn't love this book as much as I enjoyed the first one, which I didn't even really love the first one, I liked it. This one I like a little bit less than liked and who knows how I'll feel about the final one, but I just wanna see the series out. I do like some of the characters and I'm curious to kind of just see how we wrap up this whole situation. But yeah, this was, like, fine, I guess you could say. So I'm probably gonna give it a 2.5, which does feel harsh, and it's not coming from a place of like, oh my god, I hated this book. I'm just like, yeah, this book, it it is, it is what it is. So that is that. So we're starting off just so strong with a 2.5 star rating for my first book of the readathon. Love it, loving it. So hopefully that is not a uh, predictor for how the rest of the day is going to go. I'm just happy that I have finished this book. Next, we have a little bit of book mail, which, oh my God, I'm so, so excited for. And what is so cool about this book mail is actually one of you guys messaged me and was like, hey bestie, I don't know if you know about this. I don't know if you know if this exists, but like, Here's a link, I just wanted you to see it. And I love, I love, you and I, we get each other. You know, you guys are encouraging my book buying habits. I so appreciate that. And we just, we understand each other. And I think that that's very special. So what I have in this very exciting package is, okay, Ooh, as you can see, if you may have, you may already be able to tell. Are you guys ready? It's the UK paperbacks of the Mistborn trilogy. And I just, I'm in love. I'm in love. I don't know why I didn't even think to look for these because I have the UK paperback of Mistborn and I think it's really pretty and I much prefer it to the US edition. And then the Mistborn hardcover that I have is like fine. It's a book that I've had for a really long time. I'm not like obsessed with the cover, but like whatever. But then yeah, when you guys message me and we're like, you need to know about this. You need to know this exists. And I'm so happy to have these in my possession now. Okay, let's open these up. I am dying to read the second book in the series. I'm definitely gonna be reading Mistborn two in April. I think I'm actually gonna do like a vlog where I read the second book in the Mistborn trilogy and then the second book in the Greenbone saga because I really wanna continue on with that. So yeah, that'll be like a reading the second book in a fantasy series vlog. I don't know. We'll we'll just, we'll see how that goes, but oh my God. Oh my God, these are really beautiful. So that's the cover and there's this like iridescent blue, love. Not very floppy, but not like super stiff. Oh, they smell so good. Super beautiful. So this is the first book. And then the second book is The Well of Ascension. There is like a little bit of damage there, but that's okay. Is that our girl Vin on the cover looking 
stunning. Very, very excited to read this. Oh my God. And then we have the finale, which is the hero of ages. So epic. I am so excited. So there we have it. Three new children to add to the family. Really, really excited about this. And if you guys ever want to message me, if you guys ever see something that you're like, I bet Rachel would want to buy that book or that edition. My DMs are open basically. So thank you for messaging me about this. I'm super, super excited to continue on with this trilogy. And I'll probably end up putting my hardcover edition on Pango. I need to have my Pango linked in my description. I don't know if I do, but it'll be there if anyone's interested. All right, so back to 24 hour readathon things. My next book that I'm going to be picking up, I think I'm gonna do Magic Bites by Alona Andrews. I am so curious about this. I don't think it's gonna be like the most epic paranormal romance, but I do think that it'll be really fun. I think that the romance has potential to be really great. So I'm just excited. I wanna get into this. I wanna see what all the buzz is about and I'm just ready for some shifter romance. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna go on a walk right now. It's very, very nice out and I just wanna stay active because that'll definitely give me more energy to stay up throughout the day and into the evening. And I'm gonna listen to the audiobook for this while I do that. So we're gonna go on a little bit of a hot girl nature walk and I'm gonna to start magic bites when i get back i'll kind of give you guys my first impressions and then we're gonna hop on sprints later so that's the plan for the next few hours so i'm gonna go on a walk i'll start this i'll talk to you guys later before i get on to sprints <laughs> Hi guys, so it's just a little bit later. I just got back from my walk. It is so nice out and so beautiful and I had a really, really nice time. I'm glad I did that. I feel energized, I feel excited. Less exciting is I started Magic Bites and I have decided to DNF Magic Bites at 20%. I'm really sad, I hate DNFing, I hate it. I totally agree that like, if you're not enjoying a book, you should DNF it and that's okay, but it still leaves me with this like empty feeling whenever I decide to DNF a book. So ugh, I hate that I'm DNFing this, but honestly, like I'm just not enjoying this. And that's unfortunate because I was very excited by the premise of this. Our main character is Kate Daniels. She is a mercenary in this kind of paranormal fantasy version of Atlanta. And the novel starts with someone very close to her was murdered and she's kind of trying to figure out what happened. That's all fine and cool. Kate Daniels, you know, she's a badass. She's a girl boss. And and that's really great. And I really appreciate that, especially this was written, let me see, this was written in 2007. So like, love that, love the strong female lead. But number one, I feel like we were literally dropped into the middle of this plot in this world. And I just feel like I don't really understand the, even though it's like kind of modern day Atlanta, there are like fantasy aspects, the paranormal aspect, the magic systems, things like that, that have not been explained. And I just kind of feel like, I don't really know what's going on. I don't really understand these dynamics between these people. So I do feel confused. And I did see other people say that on Goodreads. So I think that might be like a thing for this book that you kind of just get dropped into the middle of it. Also something that I just don't like about this book is there is just language and wording that is used in here that is outdated and frankly offensive. And um, I'm just, I'm not enjoying, I'm not enjoying my time reading this. Plain and simple, just, it, it's not for me. I, I just, I just don't really care. I don't know. I just, I don't want to keep reading this. I just don't really have like any positive feelings about this book and why waste my time? So I'm going to DNF this. That sucks, but it is what it is. So now I need to figure out what I'm going to read instead because I was hoping that would be my second book and I'd be able to kind of fly through it, but that is not happening anymore. So I might read Sweet Hand by N.G. Peltier. I might read The Heart of Betrayal or I might read something else. I don't know. Am I going to do that? Am I really going to just deviate from my TBR? Is that what's happening? I also could read Archangel's Kiss by Nalini Singh, which is the second book in the Guild Hunter series. I'm saving Every Heart a Doorway for later, like for later in the evening when I'm kind of a little bit more tired because this will just be short, easy to get through. I think that that'll be better to read later. So it's 2.37. So I have about an hour and 20 minutes until these sprints are going to start. I'm going to figure out what I want to read next and then I will hop onto sprints at four o'clock. So I'll talk to you guys in a little bit once I have finally 
finally decided what book to read next. Hi friends, so it's a little bit later. It's like 4.45 right now. We started sprints on my channel at four o'clock and we are now in our first sprint. I have not hosted sprints since July, like during Questathon, so I feel like it's been a very long time. So I did start my next book and that is Sweet Hand by N.G. Peltier. So this is an enemies to lovers contemporary romance. Our two main characters are the maid of honor and then best man in their friend's wedding. And they've always just kind of not gotten along, sort of have always butt heads, but obviously because in the same wedding they have to work together and be around each other and so far i think that this book is really cute i really like our two main characters our male love interest he is a music producer and then our female main character she is a baker anytime there is cooking or baking involved even as like a small subplot i'm always gonna be excited about that and enjoy that and i like the friends and family that we have met so far in this book there's definitely just a happy and fun feeling with this book and i love the wedding shenanigans so thus far i'm liking that and we we have had some like pretty decent conflict between these two and I'm excited to see how we're gonna turn things around between them. So those are my first impressions. I'm just a little bit into it. I'm on page like 92. So still pretty early on, but I'm excited to read more. So I think that's gonna be it. This is gonna be a very short check-in, but I just wanted to say hello, let you guys know what I'm reading. I probably won't check in until I'm almost done with that book or I have finished it. I'll kind of give you guys my final thoughts if I decide to not check in until after, but I have about maybe like two hours left of the audiobook, So I'm gonna try to work on that so I will talk to you guys in a little bit. Hi friends so it has been several hours since we have last spoke. I think the last time we talked was at 4 45 in the afternoon. It is now 1 04 in the morning. Can you see that? I don't even know. Take my word for it. It's one o'clock in the morning. A lot has gone on in the past several hours. Let me catch you up. So the last time we talked, I was hosting sprints and those were going very well. And um, unfortunately, I just had some real life stuff going on that I had to tend to and I had to get offline. So I'm sorry that I had to end the sprints early earlier than I intended, but I appreciated everyone who came to those. And I know that Hannah decided to start sprints over on her channel to kind of keep the party going. So hopefully people got to go over there. So I did take a little bit of a break from reading, but then around like seven or eight o'clock, I want to say I picked Sweet Hand back up and I was able to finish it. So I ended up enjoying this romance. I thought that it was really cute. I thought that it was fun. There were a lot of funny moments happening. I really liked our two characters, particularly Karen, the love interest. He's more of like a sensitive, sweet kind kind of cinnamon roll romance hero, which I feel like in an enemy to lovers romance is pretty unique. So I do appreciate that the author kind of went in a different direction and gave our romance hero quite the sensitive side. I enjoyed watching this relationship transform, but I will say that kind of in the middle of the book, I was finding myself to be a little bit bored. In the beginning, I was excited. I was excited about all these friends that were meeting, the establishment of who these people were, why they didn't like each other, but I just wasn't kept engaged really throughout. So I decided to give this book a three and a half star rating. I liked it. It's not going to be an all-time favorite romance, but I do walk away from this book feeling like overall positive. I also thought the spice was very good. So like, I liked this, just not going to be like my favorite romance of all time, but still very, very cute. All right. So then after I finished Sweet Hand, I was like, okay, I want to read my final book for this 24 hour readathon because let's like do some housekeeping here. Okay. I have read The Hawthorne Legacy, two and a half stars, Magic Bites, DNF. And then I read Sweet Hand, which is a three and a half star, which that's a good rating. But I'm like, I got to read one more book. I want to try to end this on like the highest note possible that I can. So I decided to pick up Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire. Are we joking? I am mad at myself. I am so furious with myself at this moment in time because before a couple of days ago, before I was searching for a short book to read during this 24 hour readathon, I had zero intention of picking this series up, not for like any reason. It's just one of those series that I was like, eh, I don't think I'm ever gonna read that, whatever. Tell me why this is already a five star and I haven't even finished it. I am 50% of the way through with this book. I knew it was gonna be a five star on like page 20. I, God, it like freaks me out. Okay, do you guys ever think about this? <laughs> do you guys ever think about this? that like 
there are books out there that could be like your favorite book of all time, but you might never read it just because like you might not ever have the chance to pick it up or you just go like, eh, I don't want to read that. Like, eh, I don't, I don't really care. I'm not going to pick it up. But secretly that could be like a five star, amazing life changing book for you. And you would never know. Does this keep anyone else up at night? No? Okay. Well, this book, I feel like we could file under that for me because truly I was never going to pick this series up. And like, I had no, you know, no bad blood between Sean and Maguire and myself. I just like didn't think that I was ever going to read it, but I was like, you know what? Hannah likes the series and I need a short book for the 24 hour readathon this weekend. So I guess I'll pick this up. This is incredible, amazing, stunning, perfect, show-stopping. So very quickly, if you don't know what this book is about. So this book, kind of the whole premise of this series is the idea of when children in like fairy tales go into another world, what is it like for them when they come back? So like, you know, for example, when Alice went through the looking glass, what was it like when she came back to reality? When Lucy went through the wardrobe and the lion, the witch in the wardrobe, what was her life like once she got back to the real world after she spent years and years off in this fantastical Narnia. So basically Eleanor West's home for wayward children is almost kind of like a transitionary home for children who go through magical portals and doorways essentially, go live these fantastical lives in these amazing fairy tale worlds. And then they come back and they just don't know how to cope. They don't know how to exist in reality. And a lot of times their parents send them off because they're like, their parents don't believe them or they're like, what are you talking about? And Eleanor West, owns this home and takes these children in and kind of just tries to help them. And it's such a cool concept. It's such an amazing concept. And I am just like, so, so into this book. I'm so excited. I want to buy the entire series now. I really, really like Shauna McGuire's writing. It is weird and whimsical and bizarre and fun and haunting and amazing. And there's been some quotes that have like hit me really deep and oh my God. Okay. Let me see if I can find basically for context, our main character, Nancy, she meets a character who says that they are on a diet and they said, Oh, my blood is so iron rich. You could set a compass by it. So, you know, basically they're saying, Oh, I'm on this diet, you know, so that I have very iron rich blood. And then Nancy thinks to herself, she'd known girls on diets her entire life. Iron rich blood had rarely, if ever been their goal. Most of them had been looking for smaller waists, clearer complexions, and richer boyfriends, spurred on by a deeply ingrained self-loathing that had been manufactured for them before they were old enough to understand the kind of quicksand they were sinking in. How dare you, Shauna McGuire? How dare you say that last sentence? The spurred on by a deeply ingrained self-loathing that had manufactured for them before they were old enough to understand? Ouch. Um, yeah, so the writing is really, really great in this book and it's just cool. It's just a very whimsical fairy tale. I don't even know. I'm just, I'm really, really liking it. It's kind of hard to explain, but we have met a really great cast of characters. Nancy is like, I guess our main character. There's a lot of like main characters I feel like in this book, but we're following Nancy who recently came to the Wayward School for Children and she had gone to another world and is, you know, grieving that and really, really missing it. She is also asexual. We also have a transgender character that we met named Cade. And I've just really enjoyed meeting all these characters, seeing their stories, bits and pieces. I am hopeful that we're going to get a book on Cade, that we're going to get a book on Jack and Jill. I am just so ready to dive deeper into the series and I just want to know everything. And these books are so short, but I feel like Shauna McGuire is doing a good job of giving us a lot of information in a very digestible and a beautifully written way. So I feel like this is a hit. I'm not going to say it's officially a five star yet because things could go downhill. I doubt it, but I'm gonna hold off my writing until the end, but I'm loving this. Like I literally had to stop myself and go, oh, I need to film a vlog check-in because I'm like gonna finish this book in the next probably like 40 minutes. So that is the plan. I'm going to finish this book and I'm actually gonna try to edit this vlog and get it up for this morning because it is technically Sunday morning. So hopefully you'll be seeing this on a Sunday morning. So. This is going really well. I'm so, so happy that I picked this up and that I'm reading it for the final book of the readathon. It just, it feels really nice to end on such a high note. So that is it. Um, I'm gonna finish this and I will talk to you guys once I'm done. Hi. Oh my God. I'm exhausted. It is 2.08 in the morning. It's time to wrap this puppy up. So 
I finished Every Heart a Doorway literally just like 30 seconds ago. This was so cool. Oh, I'm so happy that I read this. This was such a unique and just like refreshing book. Really, really great storytelling. And it took like kind of a darker turn towards the end there. And I thought that that was cool. I don't know, this book just, this book just really, really was able to take me on a journey in a very short amount of time. I'm so excited to see what the rest of the books in the series are like. This felt very whimsical and fun and cool and weird and kind of dark at times and I'm here for it. So I gave this book five stars, which what a way to end the 24 hour readathon to do a little bit of a recap. So the first one was The Hawthorne Legacy. Fine, good, Mr. Perfectly Fine some might say. Also, Taylor's outfits at the Eras Tour. Can't talk about it. We'll talk about it some other time. Number two, Magic Bites, DNF. No, thank you. Number three, Sweet Hand. Cute, fun. Not my favorite, but like solid. And then we ended with Every Heart of Doorway. Of course, five stars. That is going to be it. That is my 24 hour readathon. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know that you made it all the way here, let's leave the star emoji because five stars, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. And yeah, that's going to be it for me. So make sure you are following me on Instagram and Goodreads. Both are linked down below. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. I love you guys so, so much, and I will catch you guys in the next one.